What's up guys? Today we're going to be going over uh, my way of tackling a uh, all-in-one, do-all, recce, scout, epic uh, rifle. And what we, what we mean by this is uh, we try to pack the most amount of capability into the you know, smallest, most effective package you can. So this is my this is my version of that long term sustainability and reliability and all that type of deal. So that's what we're going to be going over today, and uh, we're going to break it down and I'll go through each piece and give you my thought process of why I picked it. And this rifle's been a long time coming. It's uh, it's went through quite a bit of an evolution. So that's what we're going to tackle today. So this is a Daniel Defense M4 V5. LW lightweight. Uh, I got it in a trade and I kind of just had it sitting around for a while. It was kind of just an AR I never really messed with until I started getting into night vision. And going from this top, we're going to go over each part. Uh, up here we have a Surefire War Comp three prong, obviously. It's very good at mitigating recoil and muzzle flash. Uh, even at night, I've shot it under nods. I don't have a suppressor, and I kind of I don't know if I plan on getting one. But uh, shot it under, shot it at night with night vision on, and this does a really good job at killing flash. Uh, we have a mod light uh, PLH V2. Then we have a Daniel Defense fixed front sight post as a backup iron sight. We have a Russian Purst three with green laser. Um, it's a very powerful laser and illuminator. I mostly, my, I kind of like this for the illuminator more than anything. The illuminator is really, really good. You can see it on, uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there showing how powerful it is. It's very dirty illuminator. It's not super clean, but I don't really care. I can illuminate trees at, I can illuminate a hillside at 800 yards, like no problem. So I do, I do like this laser. Uh, I've seen people talk about it's, uh, some people say that it has water problems. I've never experienced that. Me and a buddy were in downpour for quite a while, uh, some hours under straight downpour. Both have purse and both of them did absolutely fine. Never had an issue with it. Uh, then we have a Unity uh, button to the mod light. Uh, that's about it. Emissary foregrip. So this is all sitting on the Daniel Defense lightweight quad rail. I know a lot of times people, you know, associate Daniel Defense and the wrist two, and that oh, I should just get the wrist two. The wrist two is a very it's a beefy quad rail, and that's great if you're free floating an M203, which is what it was designed to do. I'm not doing that. I am putting a laser on it, so I don't really need a wrist two. So I can cut weight and have a very rigid, greatly made quad rail with anti-rotation tabs and it's got four beefy bolts locking it down uh, and you get to save weight. So I think the Daniel Defense light quad rail is a very, it's, I think that's what most people should actually look at instead of wrist twos. If you're a cloner fag or whatever, then buy whatever you want. So uh, talking about the barrel is a, it is again, it's a Daniel Defense uh, Cold Hammer Forged 16 inch uh, lightweight barrel. It's not a pencil barrel and it's not a standard profile. It's kind of right in between. I was really kind of worried about it at first when I started, you know, shooting this rifle a lot. Um, my concerns weren't founded on anything. And as, I sh as I've shot it all day, doing either mag dumps or actual drills or whatever, and then going and immediately shooting targets at 350, 360 yards, like chest, like reduced chest size targets at that distances and hitting regularly, I, my, I, my concerns are completely mitigated and were unfounded. So 
Uh, this is a good barrel profile. It's good barrel length. More recently, people have been putting recce or reconnaissance scout rifles as chopping barrels, doing like 13.6, 14.5, stuff like that. And that is all perfectly fine. Uh, this is what came in the gun, so I'm just going to leave it. But also, if I was building this gun, I would probably put a longer barrel. I would either do 16 or longer. Like a, probably an 18 would be a barrel length I would look at if I was if I didn't just get this how it was. But uh, I like having that velocity. I like cooking five, five, six out of that barrel as fast as possible. I don't really buy into the you know chop, 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 chop as a go-to rifle having you know a pistol or an sbr sure fine uh just depends on what you want it for for an all general purpose rifle i like a 16 inch barrel uh that might just be me coping with the retarded nfa laws but uh hey <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do so we're coming back to the receiver and uh this is a uh, it's a daniel fence upper lower obviously we've got a aim point t2 on a unity riser and then a aim point three power magnifier on the unity flip to center mount uh i really like this setup i've had a ton of optics on it i it came with a vortex strike eagle that thing sucks sold it got a uh mro sold it kind of went lv try to go lvpo there for a while got a trigicon i think it was a one to four i forget what specific model it was I liked it, but I didn't like trying to put it on one power and then shoot on the move with it because you still have that eye box to deal with. It doesn't even matter because I had to get an optic that passive aim through. So I went with an EOTech EXPS3-2 at first. I really liked it and they are pretty much the best optic you can get for passive aiming explicitly. Uh, I don't really care about the EOTech battery life. Everyone tries to make that a big deal. Like it's quite it's still it's not as long as an aim point but it's still it's long enough for most people especially people who don't ever go out and do anything um it's going to be fine for you i just don't like the uh auto shut off feature because i can just press the two buttons and turn off my eotech like i don't need it to turn off by itself so uh having to worry about if it's on my home defense gun or something having to worry about oh, oh did i press the up or down button like is it going to be on when i wake up or like if something were to occur, I'm going to have to, oh, like come up here, press the button, look through it, make sure everything's good. Like, I don't particularly care for that. Also, it's heavier, and I'm not really like a weight fag. I don't really worry about it. But for the weight of the EOTech, you can have a optic that is more durable. I mean, if you're realistic, if you're honest, the, the aim point is more durable. You can get an aim point with a longer battery life and backup iron sights and still probably come out a little bit under the weight of, the, of a EOTech EXPS2 or EXPS3 with a Unity riser under it, you're still probably coming out right under it. And then you can just bolt on this and you, you're you not adding you know that much weight to it. Like I said, the goal of this is sustainment. So battery life, uh, battery life is awesome. And this optic setup, this is the only optic setup I've ever had that I haven't kind of immediately started like nitpicking. I really like this setup. I think this is probably about as good as it gets at the moment. Uh, especially with the Unity stuff. I hate having a magnifier that sits off to the side. Uh, it makes the weight of the rifle feel weird. Also, it gets snagged on stuff. So having it being able to sit right over the in line with the gun and keep the weight off center, I really enjoy that. So coming down here, we have a bad lever. Uh, if you say bad levers are gay, uh, you're anathema. You don't have an opinion anymore. Uh, it's a heretical statement, and you're gonna be in hell. So, um, <laughs> uh, going back, we have a Geisley two-stage trigger. Right here, we have the uh, Magpul K2. I usually like B5, or I usually like BCM pistol grips, uh, and I do. But this one, it seemed to be able to jam quite a lot, quite a lot more in there. And here I have an extra firing pin, ALG lube. I was gonna put extractor parts in here, but uh, my buddy was like, you should probably just buy a full bolt. And I was like, that's a really good idea. So I have an extra BCM bolt in there. And I think I have, I think I have an extra bat, like a CR123 or something. I don't remember. I'm not gonna take it all out. Uh, 
So that kind of goes and feeds into the sustainment thing, just getting as much useful equipment as you can in there. Uh, we have a BCM Gunfighter Ambi charging handle. I like these a lot. I, I've had Radians and I like, I like them. I just, for some reason, I prefer this, the feel of this one over the Radian. So yeah, um, then coming back here, we've got the uh, B5 SOP mod with the battery compartments. Again, it kind of made more sense when I had an EOTech on here and I was just planning on keeping it on all the time. But uh, this, these are loaded up with CR123s. I think you can also get 18650s in there. So I could switch out to that for my flashlight, I probably will, at least one tube. That's another thing that goes into the sustainment aspect of having as much stuff on board as you can where it's not absolutely ridiculous though. The only things I really plan on adding to this are a Knight's Armament battery cap. I'm not paying the 100 bucks they people are asking for them, but uh, having an extra T2 battery would be dope, so I don't really have to worry about it. Uh, just having that on board would be really nice. So. Um, everything else seems to be, this pretty much seems to be the build. This pretty much seems to be my perfect take on a do-all rifle. Like if you had one gun, I would make sure you got your barrel length right. I would make sure the weight is, I wouldn't worry about it so much if you're having one thing to do all. It's going to be heavy, but, uh, making it sure it's manageable, uh, making sure it checks all your boxes realistically. Like, if you have night vision, if you have an LVPO on there, it doesn't make much sense, personally. Uh, if you put the dot up, you know, mount it on the top of the LVPO, cool, fine. Uh, I don't personally like that mounting method. It, like, it just makes it feel, like, way too high. Um, I'm sure you can get good with it. I just think this, for me, in my area, and what I, you know, what I do, this seems to check every box for me. I got my barrel length, I still get that velocity, I've got the optics set up to where I don't have to worry about changing batteries all that much. Even if the batteries go out, I have backup iron sights. Um, I've got extra, all the extra parts I could generally probably use on board. Uh, laser unit is great, works well underwater. I uh, haven't seen, so, <laughs> I haven't seen a full submersion or water test. Probably not gonna offer up mine to do it, but in rain downpour seems to do just fine uh yeah so this is my take on the do all rifle if you have any uh disagreements or complaints or whatever then uh go ahead and leave them in the comments i'm not going to read them <laughs> but uh if you have a buddy who's like straight retarded and doesn't know how to build out an ar or just puts bolts random crap to it send him my videos hopefully i can help him not be that way anymore uh but yeah, if you guys want, if you guys like my videos, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Share with your buddies if you want. Uh, I don't really, I have no reason to particularly do this. I just am kind of doing it on my own free time and for my own fun. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next one.